right, Mud. Well, listen, th thanks for taking out the time to do this. I know you've got to be pretty busy if you're getting ready to go to Toronto. Yeah, yeah, so. we're leaving early Thursday, and there's more than I can get done here before I go. Well, appreciate your time. All right. So, I'd like to start this out, Michael, with um, something that I heard from a really good friend of mine, Bruce Lipton. He's a microbiologist and sort of set the tone for this interview. He, he once told me, he says, remember the story about the caterpillar becoming a butterfly? And I said, yeah. He says, well, something that a lot of people don't really recognize is the fact that there's a, that part in the middle because the caterpillar ends up eating hundreds of times its weight in food and almost destroys its environment. But for some unknown reason, it finds some place to hang upside down and spins its cocoon and completely starts breaking down. And in the midst of that chaos, if you would open up that cocoon, it looks like a bunch of, well, let's just call it garbage. It looks like a bunch of chaotic garbage. But inside all of those cells that look really chaotic, are something called imaginative cells. And he says that the amazing thing about, about the imaginative cells is they somehow pick up on a visionary experience of what has to be. And they use all of the chaotic cells that look like they're nothing but garbage from the old caterpillar days and reformulate that into a new pattern of a butterfly. And I think in today's world, that's what we call our visionaries. People that are able to use the old worn out garbage of our past, all of our call it mistakes for lack of better words, but they're able to use that and see beyond the chaos, see beyond the conflict, see beyond the, all of the negativity and go, okay, it's time to take a deep breath tune in to what is really necessary and start visualizing a new future and, and use what we have here at our disposal. And, and this reminds me of you. You know, you, you're like a, uh, I don't know, when my wife and I first watched The Garbage Warrior, we were obviously impressed. You know, it's a, it's a very impressive thing you're doing. But when we got, we bought all of your manuals and uh, when, we, when we read your vision, and we, we just thought, you know what? This is really, really important in today's world. No matter if they use your system or straw bale houses or whatever, we have to start living not just sustainable. We have to really bring it down a notch and, and let the, the earth really revitalize itself. <clears throat> so that's really why we wanted to talk to you today because we honestly believe in what you're doing and we have friends in Brazil that really want to hear you when you go to Rio. They, they own thousands of acres outside of Brasilia and we're all totally into what you're trying to do, Michael. So I really appreciate your time and the, uh, the possibility of helping you spread the word. Okay, thanks. You are one of the imaginative cells. <laughs> I bet I bet of all the things when you were 20 years old if somebody told you someday you're going to be called the garbage warrior and an imaginative cell you'd have probably just laughed at them probably <laughs> <laughs> so where are we at today Michael with with everything that you're doing well it's it's sort of uh I'd have to say it's a crescendo situation. Um, we've started an academy, and it's turning out to be beyond our wildest dreams because when you get young, not, not always young, but just uh, eager to, to evolve people together in one place, wanting to learn from our past decades of mistakes, but also wanting the same thing, wanting a better world. Uh, the Academy has attracted a bunch of people like that and, and that's fueling us, we're fueling them. Uh, we're doing projects all over the world, 
plus the academy. Now the academy is getting integrated into that, and it's all just uh, it's it's a lot. And we're we're just trying to you know it's almost like having a tiger by the tail. We we're trying to keep up with what's going on, and it's uh, uh, definitely taking up every ounce of energy and time. Uh, but it's giving us energy at the same time. So it's it's an amazing time for this idea because it is it is needed at this point and we have been doing it for so long we're we're pretty good at it. But we're constantly learning like uh or like part of what you were saying made me think of one of the things that we have really learned in the last few years is that part of the whole thing is is in us and having you know we're we're coming up with all kinds of ways to use garbage and and make energy and harvest water and contain and treat sewage and grow food yeah we're doing all of those things because those systems in the real world here are all flailing right now but another thing that really that I would have to point out to everyone I get a chance to talk to is part of the battle is in our own minds and hearts we have to we have to need less we have to realize that it can be much more simple to stay alive on this planet because there are so many people and there are dwindling resources and there are so many things that are out of control a more simple life is the first step for everyone yeah, I, I like what you said once. You said, live simply so others can simply live. And yeah, I didn't say that. An economist, E.F. Schumacher, said that. Yeah, well, it's it's a good one to lay on you because that's exactly what this is about. And yeah. And when you're, trying to in, when you're trying to make your own power, power and harvest your own water and grow your own food and contain and treat your own sewage and heat and cool yourself in your own shelter... When you're trying to do those things, it's a hell of a lot easier to do those things when it's a small amount of power that you need. And, and you know, if, if you're making your own power, all of a sudden you're going to go, well, I don't know that I need to leave these lights on all night long or I don't need that, know that I need to do this. So there, there are a lot of tricks. You know, I don't know that I need to water my lawn all night long if I'm harvesting my own water. You, when you put yourself in charge of of your uh, uh, utilities, then uh, it does cause you to go, you know, question what your uses are, and you know, when you start doing that, then you start making room for other people to stay alive on this planet, and uh, and plants and animals. You start making room for others. Yeah, my my wife is from Brazil, Dara. And one of the first things she noticed when she came up here was she said, this is crazy. Everybody has green lawns out in front. Why doesn't everybody grow food? You know? yeah. And being an American and indoctrinated into the climatology of being an American, I never even thought about it. But the more I thought about it, it's actually changed our lives. We have a garden out back. We have... Uh, a whole solar bank of solar panels. We have two wind turbines, but it it feeds back into the system and just sort of equalizes our electric bill. But you know, it's a start. You know, it, it's a start because we we really think. Now, here's where we have to get a little bit real. I mean, I I think maybe you have more faith in people than I do. I'm not sure, but the good thing about your system is as an individual, it can be really great. Collectively, it could save lives and mankind. But I'm not too sure if, if people will do this until it's too late because people are so comfortable, especially in the United States. And I think this is something you're going to notice when you go to Brazil. People in other countries are more open to this. Um, one word when you go to Brazil favela we we had an idea in brazil when we first watched the garbage warrior to get in touch with with the powers that be in rio and start a movement 
because you could start at the favela at, at one level and just start working your way down and using all of their bricks and stones and mud and just revitalize that whole area. But th that would be a, a quite a job to tackle. But here in the United States, I don't know. I, I think people are going to stay on this boat until the bow sinks. But it's really good to get the word out for the people that really want to take advantage of this. What, what do you think about that? Well, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that see, uh, you can go either way. You can say that the world is not going to make it, but we're just going to make a few, or, or a few people as comfortable as possible uh, on the way down, you know. Uh, you can say that we may make it in time, but the thing is, that's the future. Now is obvious. We need to start uh, making today and tomorrow a little better for uh, for the next day after that. I mean, I'm not really looking too far down the line. I'm looking at what I have to do right now, and what I have to do right now is a lot. And I'm trying to make we we know a, quite a, a bit about how we can make ourselves survive, and we're seeing that it's valuable enough that uh, we want it. We want to share it uh, as much as possible. Uh, you know, when we, I mean, the, the whole process is uh, of like going to Haiti after the earthquake and trying to take what we know and make it work for them um, you know so you'd say that's a nice thing to do and help those people and whatever the truth is we came back we came back we learned more than we taught we learned how simple it could be to live and and how, how the quality of life can be a lot better by living simply and I mean we we came back educated from really trying to educate them. And so you just never know what you're going to get into. And there's no need to predict the future or, or, or be worried about the future. Let's make right now as good as we can. And that's kind of what we're doing. Yeah, because I'm 64 now. And, and I think you've probably learned also that looking back in my life, almost everything I've ever worried about never happened. Yeah, so... Yeah. It, it as you get older, you realize that, and you live more in the moment because we can't really tell what's going to happen in the future. But I know what you mean about other countries. We just got back from Brazil, and there, there's so many people living really, really simply. And again, that's what I like about your system because what most people see as a problem, garbage, you see as a solution. And and I think you can transpose that over onto so many things in our civilization today. Not only in just building a house, but building a future. So much of what we have, we see as a problem, and it's actually a solution if you can find it. Yeah, it's all, it's all a puzzle. And, you know, when, when there is a problem, you maneuver around it until it looks like a solution. I mean, every problem is a solution. and Every solution can be a problem. It's like it all has to do with your ability to maneuver, uh, you know, mentally or spiritually or emotionally or, or physically, but just maneuvering your thinking and your belief system. And that's what, that's what made garbage be, you know, gold for us because uh, we started seeing garbage as you know, I see a giant tire pile and I see a, a city. I mean, garbage to me, what, what people call garbage, I don't, even, I don't even have a definition in my mind anymore for garbage. 